Do people in Arizona have to drive their cars with oven mitts? Do scorpions climb into your bed at night here? And does everyone in Arizona eat Mexican food? We'll answer those questions and more. So throw on your shades and grab an EG's. We're gonna unbox the state of Arizona. And that's kind of a weird reflection. Okay, always a good way to begin a video. We're in an up and coming major metro area. This is Phoenix. It's very popular right now. In fact, the Phoenix area is the fastest growing metro in the whole country. And Arizona is the third fastest growing state. We'll get into why a little later, but if you're looking for a place to move that's warm and still relatively affordable, the Copper State can be your new jam. But Arizona is a whole lot more than just Phoenix. Arizona has a lot of different areas and cultures and ways of life. To get a complete overview of what Arizona is all about, we need to look at it from a higher level and then drill down into various regions. This is Arizona, people. Now at first glance, you'll notice there's a lot of Indian land here. Actually, 27% of the whole state's Native American reservation land. And that's a lot. Arizona has the most Native American land of all. That's because Arizona was home to a lot of Native American tribes. Now, 4% of the whole state's population are American Indians. It's the fourth highest percentage in the country. Most Arizonans visit the Native American land to frequent one of many casinos in the state of Arizona. The state has 34 total casinos, which ranks as the eighth most in the country. Due to the awesome beauty of the state, Arizona is also home to a lot of federally protected land. That means government land set aside for preservation. Now, if you added up the government land to the Native American land, that's 80% of the whole state. There's more mountains here than Switzerland. And there's meteor craters and petrified forests and waterfalls and red rocks and rivers and the Grand Canyon. But that's just where the tourists go. Even though it's one of the world's seven natural wonders, most Arizona people have seen it once. Many people have never seen it at all. Over here along the state's western borders, the Colorado River, home to smallish river towns, and then bigger cities like Bullhead City and Parker. Along this side of the state's where Arizona people go to cool off and to gamble. If you drive your car far enough, you'll get to Las Vegas. Lake Havasu City is where all the young kids go to drive their boats and get wasted. It's a madhouse here every year, and kids die because they do stupid things on the water. You know the saying, have a brew, have a screw, have a sue. Down here's Yuma. There's nothing here but Mexican restaurants, cheap hotels, and dollar stores. It's so desolated near Yuma, they use this area to film scenes from Star Wars movies. Up here in this section of the state is the Four Corners. It's a very unique place where the state of Arizona, Utah, Colorado, and New Mexico all come to one point. A lot of tourists pull over here and take pictures. I did once myself. It wasn't really all that exciting. And of course, you have the Mexican border. There really isn't a lot to do down here. There's a big wall that's supposedly getting bigger. The closer you get to the border, the more taco stands and cheap, duty-free shopping locations you get. Arizona people go into Mexico occasionally, and most of them come back. The rest of the state outside of the major cities is mostly desert and animals that will kill you and cactus that will attack you. Yes, that's a thing. It's called a choya cactus. Arizona people know not to touch them. And that's pretty much the border of the state. Now let's drill down into some of Arizona's cities. This is Winslow. If you're familiar with the famous song by the Eagles, Take It Easy, you'll know that song put this town on the map. It's a cute town right along Route 66 where you can shop and get a bite to eat. It's not very exciting. But what is exciting and cool is nearby Flagstaff, located in the state's Coconino National Forest. Flagstaff's a liberal college town that's getting more and more crowded. It's home to Northern Arizona University. Phoenixites sometimes make the three hour drive here to get a reprieve from the desert heat and to gawk at all the hippies. Nearby is a couple of ski resorts. Arizona actually has three ski resorts. The skiing is not very good. To get really good skiing, you have to drive all the way up to Utah. Sedona is a cute artsy place that's also tucked into the forest. It also has a cute little downtown. Prescott's a real cowboy town. The world's first rodeo is here. This is where you'll see people wear boots with spurs into fries. Way out here on the eastern side of the state is a large population of Mormons, especially near the Sholo area. There's actually quite a few Mormons in the state. Eastern Phoenix metro area also has quite a few of them as well. Now way down here is Tucson. This is the second largest city in the state where more than a half million people live and it's growing fast. This is where the most liberal people in Arizona are. 
There's a bunch of colleges here, including the University of Arizona. It's fairly inexpensive, and the crime rate's pretty high, at least for thefts. Like most of Arizona, there's a natural beauty to the area. There's an EG's on every corner here. Now, outside of Mexican food, Arizona people love their EG's. They make sub sandwiches, but most people go there to get a frozen fruit drink. They are hugely popular on a 120 degree day, everyone. And EG's did not pay for that. I wish they did. And down here, south of Tucson, in the middle of the desert, is Tombstone. This is where Wyatt Earp and Doc Holliday spent some time, and they got into a big gunfight. This is an example of a classic old American West Saloon town. And then we have the Phoenix metro area. Now we mentioned how fast it's growing here. Phoenix is popular with a capital P. That's because it's not too bad a place, except the heat, but more on that later. The Phoenix metro area is where all the younger people are moving in, mostly for jobs and a better life, many from California. This is a really spread out area, dense in the middle with many various suburbs, which kind of act like hubs spreading out into the desert. The worst parts of Phoenix are kind of all spread out around the center of the city. The suburbs are prosperous. For example, Chandler's newish and it's growing in population. Gilbert's also a nice place and it's very developed and it has a small Mormon population. Mesa's all spread out. There's nice areas here and there's some really rundown places with hillbillies and rednecks. Glendale's on the more ghetto side. It's not super nice here. This is where the football stadium is for Arizona's NFL team, the Cardinals. They're not very good most of the time. The only worse place than Glendale in the greater Phoenix area is El Mirage. Scottsdale's home to the snobs. That's why they call it Snotsdale. This is where the rich Karens live. Old Town Scottsdale has a decent bar scene and a Western flair. It's pretty cute. Tempe is home to Arizona State University, one of the biggest party schools in the nation. This is Mill Avenue. This is the place to go for drinking and fraternizing in the whole area. Phoenix itself is pretty balanced politically. The closer you are to downtown, the more liberal it is, but the outskirts are very conservative, making it one of the largest conservative counties in the nation. Maricopa County's huge. It's actually larger than 23 total states. Crime-wise, it's bad, but not bad, bad. Out of America's 180 largest cities, Phoenix is around the 35th worst for crime. Most of the Phoenix metro area is beige homes, or some variation of beige, dark beige, medium beige, light beige, beige, beige. Every other house has a swimming pool. Many people don't have yards. They have rocks instead, which is stupid. And because of the climate, if you do want grass, you have to plant a summer lawn and a winter lawn. Mappy, come get your dog. I'm talking. Sorry, Yappy's been ornery lately. Did you know Phoenix ranks number one in the country for getting up early? I did not know that, Mappy, but according to this article, almost half of Phoenix gets up before 7 a.m., likely to enjoy their day before it gets too hot. Uh, oh, look out! Oh, God. Better take him to the vet. That thing was huge, Mappy. Suck the poison out. That doesn't work, Karen. Man, I hope that dog's okay. Of course, we can't talk about Arizona without discussing the weather. It's hot. Right around Memorial Day, you get a taste of what's coming. And then one day you look at your phone and it says it's going to be 111 degrees. And you know you're in for it now, pal. You will likely not see below 100 until sometime around Christmas. No, the heat stops around Labor Day. Sometimes. Maybe. Arizona heat will melt roads. It'll melt your face off. Hop in your car at 3 p.m. to go get an EG's and you might as well throw on a spacesuit. There is no amount of protection for the pain a searing seatbelt buckle causes. It'll leave a permanent mark. The steering wheel is so hot, you need an oven mitt, because your car is an oven. The hottest ever recorded in the state was 128 degrees in 1994 in Lake Havasu City. But it was also minus 40 in this state once too, and they get a decent amount of snow in the higher elevations. It snowed in Phoenix twice, and they got an inch both times, and no, hail doesn't count. But it's a dry heat. Anything below 70 degrees, and people will put on sweaters here. The only real break you get are from two weather disturbances that hit the desert areas of the state every summer, monsoons and haboobs. If it's haboobing, you better get moving. You don't want to get stuck in one of these suckers, pal. It's enough to make even the toughest Arizona ombre cower. Or, at the very least, just pull over and let it pass by. These are windy dust storms that pop up out of nowhere and make driving nearly impossible and weddings nearly impossible. You get dust all over yourself and your car gets dirty. Monsoons are basically really intense thunderstorms and they're very welcome here. You're like, awesome, it's raining, because it never really does out here. 
Now, if it's haboobing and monsooning at the same time, you might die. No, you just need to get a car wash. But once the five major heat months are over, the weather's pretty nice here. Fall, weather, and spring are kind of lovely. It's not hot everywhere in the state. There's days when Arizona has both the hottest location and the coldest location in the U.S. on the very same day. If there's a knock on Arizona, besides the blistering dry summers, it's the state's education system. Arizona's notorious for having some of the nation's worst schools, and it's third last for education funding. This is the Copper State, where they print pennies. You'd think they'd be able to make a lot more pennies to pay this state's hardworking teachers. If you're into the outdoors, there's a ton of stuff to do in Arizona. Phoenix is one of the few large metro areas in the nation that's so close to nature and offers so many outdoor options within a short drive. Hiking or even salt river tubing is within 30 minutes. There's deserts to explore. There's great places for hunting. Golf is huge here. There's more golf courses in Arizona than there are in Scotland. And that's where golf was invented. And there's no daylight savings time, so you can stay outside longer, everyone. Lots of people make the six hour trek to San Diego or LA for long weekends, or they go to nearby Lake Powell, which is mostly just rocks and mountains, or Lake Mead, which is created by the Hoover Dam. Both of these lakes are the biggest man-made lakes in the country. If you're not into the outdoors, you might find Arizona boring. There's some museums and some historical stuff, but there's no theme park. Actually, Phoenix is the largest metro area in the nation without a theme park. Now, rumor is one day they're gonna get a theme park, but it's so hot here in the summer, most people are just fine with water parks. And bars, there's plenty of places to get popped. And of course, there's casinos and tacos to keep you entertained. Many people in Arizona could just sit at a Mexican restaurant all day and be quite happy. Being so close to Mexico, Arizona is a Mexican food lover's dream. Closer to the border in places like Tucson, the food's more authentic and actually better, but the whole state loves their burritos and tacos and quesadillas and everything with beans and cheese on it. Just look at all the Mexican restaurants in Greater Phoenix alone. Este video es raro es usted por el restaurante mexicano de Alberto. Vamos abajo, tenemos unos tacos geniales. Es el restaurante mexicano de Alberto. And Arizona has mini Del Tacos, which if they are not eternally grateful for, then they should be because it's hard to find them the further you get from the West Coast. Arizona is a melting pot of other states' cultures and strikes an even balance between urban and nature. People are flocking here and the cost of living is creeping up. And the state's actually much less old-fashioned and conservative these days. You could even call it kind of cosmopolitan. You get to live right on the edge of one of the world's best deserts no matter where you are in the state, which means you're up close with rattlesnakes and tumbleweeds and jumping cacti and scorpions will even get into your house and you'll find them on your bedroom floor. And no, that's not a joke and that's just crazy. Some say Arizona is the most Instagrammable state in the nation and you can see why. That's Arizona in a nutshell. Now we didn't even have time to talk about how the snowbirds flock here every winter or how dangerous the Sonoran Desert is, nor did we have time to talk about the horse and cattle ranches all over the state. But we have to go. I hear some rattling on the porch, and it might be time to give them the boot. And now some bad singing. How can it be so hot, be, be so hot, be, be so hot, be, be so hot? Can it burn a lot, burn me a lot, burn me a lot, burn me a lot? Arizona, it's like a damn oven, the summer is a Terrible time, oh Arizona There's not enough shade here, it feels like the sun is ten feet away You step outside and it's like walking right into hell I can't leave the house because my tires are melted 103? At night? What the what the? Is EG's open? I could just bathe in an EG's right now My pool isn't cool my shoes are all goo. How can it be so hot? Be be so hot. Be be so hot. Be be so hot. Can it burn a lot? Burn me a lot. Burn me a lot. Burn me a lot. Arizona, I feel like the devil. The summer is a terrible time. Oh, Arizona, I wish it would rain more. It feels like the sun is 10 feet away. Ouch. Hey guys, if you learned something new or you just like this video, make sure to like it. And if you really like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get all of our videos about what it's like to live in different places in America.